Good day, great tens. Welcome to this next lesson in mathematics. I hope that you had an awesome weekend. Um, I know weekends are always way too short, but now that you're in Monday, I hope that you're ready to carry on learning about functions. So we spoke about, we covered the straight line graph, the parabola, the hyperbola, and the exponential graph. So the next few slides, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be we're going to be um, interpreting graphs, okay? And what does that mean? That means that basically we're going to be looking at types of examples like this and the questions that I've taken are all out of old exam papers where they give us, they either give us two graphs and they ask us for the coordinates of the intersection or whatever, or something like this where we ask to find the equations of the graphs, or we ask to draw the graphs, etc. So I've included quite a few different exam paper questions, and there's a reason for this. There are quite a few, and <laughs> there's a reason for it. It's because A, so many different types. I mean, look at this. This here is a parabola and a straight line, parabola and an exponential with a shift. This is hyperbola with a shift. This is a hyperbola with a straight line. You get my point. So the point is that I know that a lot of you find graphs a little bit complicated and functions a little bit complicated. So I like to make sure that my students know how to do these because if you can do them in grade 10, when you get to grade 11 and grade 12, it's so easy. Yes, they might add a few things like a, a, a horizontal shift for shift and not just a vertical shift or they might, yeah. So if they do that, it's not a big deal. You guys can cope with it if you know these graphs now. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to work through exam questions on interpreting graphs graphs and make sure that you understand them perfectly. So it says the graphs y is equal to minus x squared plus 4. Okay, that's obviously the parabola and look how nice they are. They even labeled for us. y is equal to minus x squared plus 4. And the coordinates, it says and y equals x minus 2. And there you go. That's the straight line. y is equal to x minus 2 are given. It says they want the coordinates a, b, c, d, the coordinates of e and the distance c, d. Okay, so before I do anything, I look at this and I go, well, this is obviously a parabola. Okay, because they've written it next to it and obviously from the shape. And this plus four where it cuts the y-axis, so I know that that value there is four. So before I've even read the questions in my head, I've said that value there is obviously four because that's what the constant is. Similarly, if you look at the straight line, you can see that the straight line here is y equals x minus two, which means that d must be minus two. Okay, so now let's look at the questions. It says find the coordinates of A, B, C, and D. Oh my word, we've already found C and D. Ta-da! So that's pretty easy, okay? Now it says they want the coordinates of A and B. So A and B are where you cut the x-axis. So do you agree these values are going to be x, 0? The y value here is 0. C looks 0. And the y value here is 0. So if we let y equals 0 for the parabola. We're going to let y equals 0 for the parabola. Okay, then do you agree? Well, we could actually, ha, huh, we could actually do that as well for the straight line, but then we'd only get one of the two points. So let's do it for the parabola and we'll get both the points, okay? So there we go, 0 is equal to minus x squared plus 4. Then we take it across, becomes minus 4 is equal to minus x squared x squared is equal to, actually, you know what? I'm going to show you a better way of doing this. Forget I said this. I'll show you why I don't like that method. Okay, do you agree that I nobody likes a minus in the front? Okay, so what we're going to do is divide the whole thing by minus. So we get 0 is x squared minus 4. Now do you see that's the difference of two squares? So therefore, this becomes x minus 2, x plus 2 equals 0. Therefore, x equals minus 2 or x equals plus 2. And I'll show you why I stopped doing it the other way in a minute. Okay, so that's plus 2. I stopped doing it the other way because the other way you end up with x squared is equal to 4. And then what happens, grade 10s, even the best students with the best intentions will sometimes just rush and they go, okay, I need to square root both sides. The square root of x squared is x. The square root of 4 is 2. Ha, there's my answer but you've missed one, okay, or minus two, okay. So the best thing to do is always solve it this way. Solve it as a difference of two squares, and then you don't have that possible mistake of 
losing that one variable. Okay, so now we've got A and B is minus 2 plus 2, C and D. So we found all those, okay? Now it says they want the coordinates of E. So what is E? E is where the two graphs cut. So do you agree that X and Y value of these two graphs is going to be the same at E? Okay, the X value on the straight line and the X value on the parabola is going to be the same. And the Y value of that point for the parabola and the Y value for the straight line are going to be the same. So that means that I could equate these two. I could say minus X squared plus 4 is equal to X minus 2. And now we're going to solve. And guys, you should realize that we should have two points because here's one and here's one. And we already know what the X value of that is, which makes life a little bit easier. We just need to find that. Okay, so let's take everything onto the one side. So we've got zero is equal to X squared minus X, no, plus X, sorry, minus four minus two. All I've done is I've taken everything onto the right hand side. Okay, so I end up with X squared plus X minus six. And that becomes x minus 3, x, sorry, plus 3, x minus 2. Therefore, x is equal to 3. That can't be right. Or x is, sorry, x equals, <laughs> shame. x equals minus 3, x equals minus 3, or x equals 2. I'm having a really blonde day. No offense to any blondes out there, really. My mom's a blonde. I'm a blonde wannabe. Okay. Um, what is a blonde wannabe? Someone who dyes their hair blonde because they think blondes are very cool. That's a blonde wannabe. Okay. So I've got X plus 3 and X minus 2. Okay. So therefore, what can we do? We can say, therefore, X plus 3 equals 0 or X minus 2 equals 0. Therefore, X is equal to minus 3 or x is equal to 2. There you go. So we've already got that. Now we've just found the x value of this, which is going to be minus 3. Now we need to find the y value. And do you agree that we can take this minus 3 and substitute it either into the parabola or into the straight line to get the y value? Now I'm kind of lazy, so I'm going to substitute into the easier of the two, which is y is equal to x minus 2. So I'm going to go y is minus 3 minus 2, which equals minus 5. So that's minus 5. So the coordinates of E are minus 3 minus 5. Ta-da! Okay, last question. They want us to find the distance CD. So they want us to find distance distance here. Okay, now normally when you're asked to find the distance between two things, we use the distance formula, right? But today we don't need to. And why is that? And that's because we know that these two are vertically aligned. They're on the y-axis. So we know that this distance here is how much? That distance is 4. And how long is this? This is just 2. And 4 plus 2 is 6 units. How easy is that? Normally, what I would say is that we have to go CD is equal to the square root of X2 minus X1 squared plus Y2 minus Y1 squared. Okay, let me just show you how that I can prove this. Do you agree this value is 0, 4? And this value here is 0 minus 2, right? So then this would be the square root of X2 minus X1 is 0 plus Y2 is 4 minus y1, which is minus 2, all squared, which ends up being, what did I say, 6 again. There you go. So there you go. That's why you can just do it. If they're vertically aligned then or horizontally aligned, then you can just add up the units if you know what they are. Okay, let's get on to this question. Now, this is quite a bit more challenging and we're going to take it nice and slowly. Okay, it says f of x is equal to ax squared plus q and g of x is equal to m to the x plus 2 and you will notice they've been mean. They haven't actually even labeled f of x and g of x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a highlighter out and I'm going to show you what f of x is. f of x is obviously the parabola. Okay, that doesn't really help, does it? Which means that this line over here, let's go to pen, 
this line over here has to be the exponential graph. That has to be the exponential graph. Yeah. Okay. So now, and I apologize for the bump. Okay, now it says, f of x is ax squared plus q, and g of x is m to the x plus, two, plus t. And they want us to determine a, q, m, and t. All working must be done. Okay, so let's start with q's and t's. Do you agree that the q tells you where you cut the y-axis for a parabola? And in this case, do you agree that you're cutting at 2? So therefore, I can say, well, this is pretty obvious that Q is equal to 2, All right? There it is. Now, with, so what do I have now? Now I have F of X, which equals Y, is equal to AX squared plus 2. Now I need to get the A value for this because they've asked this for A, Q, M, and T. So there's Q. Do you agree I've got a point, 2 and 5, that goes through both the parabola and the exponential graph? So I can substitute that value 2, 5 into this equation, I can get A. So I'll go 5 is equal to A times by 2 squared plus 2. I take that across, I get 5 minus 2 is equal to 4A. Therefore, A is going to be 5 minus 2 is 3 over 4. So there we go, we've got A. So therefore, the equation for this graph is going to be f of x is 3 over 4 x squared plus 2. Okay, now let's look at the exponential graph. Do you agree that exponential graphs usually go through 1? Think about this way. The rule is a to the 0 is 1. Anything to the 0 is 1. So if a, if if x is 0, we should be getting a value of 1, y is 1. So normally, this is where your exponential graph should be going through, be going through 1. But now it's going through 2, which means what have we added? We've added a whole 1 to this. So therefore, t is equal to 1. So, so far then, we've got g of x, which equals y, equals m to the x plus 1. And again, we need to get the value of m. And again, we've got this pretty value 2, 5 that goes into, that goes through both the graphs. So we can substitute that in. So we go 5 equals m squared plus 1. Okay. So then do you agree that 4 is equal to m squared? So to get rid of this, you're going to need to square root both sides. So I've got to go square root of 4 is equal to the square root of m. Therefore, m is equal to plus or minus 2. And now we need to decide, is this a positive graph or a negative graph? And we can say, well, since the gradient is going up to the right, this is a positive graph. So therefore, it's a positive 2. So therefore, the equation of this graph is g of x is equal to 2 to the x plus 1. Okay, so now we've got m. And we've got T. Ta-da! Now it says, from your graph, determine the values of X, which F of X is smaller than or equal to G of X. Okay, so let's just write that out. We want the values of X, which F of X is smaller than or equal to G of X. Okay, and we want to know when they are smaller than or equal to. What are they really asking you for? They want to know for which values of x, the y value of f of x, the y value, the y value of f of x is smaller than or equal to the y value of g of x. That's what they're asking. They want to know when is the y value of the, the parabola going to be smaller than the y value of the hyperbola, I mean exponential graph. And do you agree that it's actually from, where is it smaller? Let's see. Over here, this is bigger, 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 bigger. Yeah, they're equal. Okay. Yeah, the parabola is smaller, 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 smaller. Up to here, 
and then it starts overtaking again. So do you agree from year to year, the parabola is actually lower. It's only got a smaller y value than the, than the exponential graph. Okay, so now we want to know this x value. So it's going to be x has got to be smaller than or equal to 2 and greater than or equal to 0. There you go. And that's how you do that. Okay, so don't get confused. When they say f of x is smaller than g of x, for which way is the x? They're actually looking at the y values of these things. Okay. Right, let's look at another example. Okay, this time we have to draw it. Okay. So let's choose a blue. It says, answer the question on the diagram sheet provided, diagram sheet. Given f of x is equal to 2 over x plus 3, sketch the graph of the given function of the axis provided, indicating all the intercepts for the axes and asymptotes. Okay, so the way we do this, remember, is that we usually, the easiest way to do this is to plot some points. So we're going to go x, and we're going to go y, and we're going to go, let's choose factors of 12. So let's go and let's make it easy for ourselves. Um, I say the biggest number here is 10. So yeah, so we're going to go minus 12, minus 6, uh, minus 4, minus 3, minus 2, minus 1. I don't need to do this many. I'm just trying to show you, the, give you an idea. We can do this many and I'm happy for you to do them. Zero. Then we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 6 and 12. And you guys really don't need to do this many, but since I'm showing you how to do this diagram, I'm going to go through all of these to make sure you understand how to do it, okay? So let's go through it. It says, okay, it's just by the way, if f of x is equal to 12 over x, do you agree that what you should have is a parabola that's in the positive two halves, okay? Those are the two positive halves. And then the x-axis and the y-axis would be your asymptotes, okay? But now we've shifted it by putting in plus three. So which way is it shifted it? Do you agree that it shifted it up? So it shifted the graph up plus three. So your asymptotes are still gonna be that x equals zero because the x, the y-axis still is an asymptote, but the new asymptote is going to be y is equal to 3. It's going to be a new asymptote at y equals 3. Okay, but now we can still plot all our points, okay? By doing this, we're going to substitute it into here. So we get 12 divided by minus 12 is minus 1. Plus 3 is 2, okay? 12 divided by minus 4 is minus 3. Plus 3 is 0. Actually, that's a 6. <gasps> okay, wait. Okay, so we get minus 6. 12 divided by minus 6 is minus 2, plus 3 is 1. 12 divided by minus 4 is minus 3, plus 3 is 0. 12 divided by minus 3 is minus 4, plus 3 is minus 1. 12 divided by minus 2 is what? Is going to be minus 6, plus 3 is minus 3. 12 divided by minus 1 is minus... 12 plus 3 is minus 9. 12 divided by 0 is just going to leave you with a 3. 12 divided by 1 is 12 plus 3 is 15. Um, 12 divided by 2 is 6 plus 3 is 9. 12 divided by 3 is 4 plus 3 is 7. 12 divided by 4 is 3 plus 3 is 6. 12 divided by 6 is 2 plus 3 is 5. And 12 divided by 12 is 1 plus 3 is 4. Okay, sure. Okay, so let's have a look. When x is minus 12, it's off the page, so we don't have to worry about that. If x is minus 6, um, that's minus 8, minus 6, y is 1. Okay, I'm going to put little crosses because my dots tend to change to go somewhere else. If x is minus 4, y is 0. If x is minus what, 3, y is minus 1. If x is minus 2, y is minus 3. And when x is minus 1, y is minus 9. Oopsie. Uh, minus 1. And when x is naught, y is 3, because that is our asymptote. Okay. So you can see the graph is 
definitely doing something like this. And I apologize for my squiggly lines, guys. You guys have got pencils and erasers, so please make sure your graph is slightly smoother than that. Okay, when x is 1, y is 15, it's off the page. When x is 2, y is 9. When x is 3, y is 7. Okay, 6, 7. When x is 4, y is 6. x is 4, y is 6. When x is 6, y is 5. And when x is 12, okay, that's off the page as well. So it looks like that. Okay. And then, so can you see that it goes, to, now they said, indicate the intercepts with the axes. So that point there is going to be minus four, zero. And asymptotes, this would be y, sorry, y equals three. There we go. We've done it. Ta-da! Okay. Now, again, like I said, you really don't need to put all those points in. You're welcome to if you want to. I just put them in so you could see which way to go. Okay. Now it says, given the equation of g of x that results when f of x is shifted five down units down in the form of g of x. So all that we are doing is we're now subtracting five units. So I've taken f of x and subtracted it, shifted it five units down. So all we're going to do is go minus five, which equals what? It gives you 12 over x minus two. Ta-da! See how easy that is. Okay, now let's look at another question. Okay, so it says given f of x is three over x plus one, that's an x. So that is a hyperbola plus one. And a straight line, g of x equals minus two x minus four. Sketch the graphs of f and g on the same set of axes. Okay, so let's do f. So do you agree we're going to go x and y? And this is going to be much easier. It's going to be minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. In fact, I'm not even going to worry to do minus 2 because that's going to make it horrible. Okay, so minus 3. x divided by 3 divided by minus 3 is minus 1. Um, plus 1 is zero. Okay, and then three divided by minus one is minus three plus one is minus two. This here is going to be one. And then three divided by one is three plus one is four. And three divided by three is one plus one is two. Okay, so we know that the asymptote is going to be, yeah, we also know that this is a positive graph and it's, it's going to be going like this and it's going down there and it's going to cross the x-axis, okay? And in fact, it crosses the x-axis. Let's have a look. When x is minus 3, y is naught. There you go. So that's where it cuts it. When x is minus 1, y is minus 2. Okay, and when, there we go. So now it's just going to be something along the lines of this. Okay, so that's the one graph. Then when x is 1, y is 4. And when x is 3, y is 2. So it's going to cut somewhere like that. Okay, not too bad. Hey, now let's do g of x. g of x is a negative straight line graph. It goes through minus 4, so it's already going through there. And it's got the gradient of minus 2x plus 4. So we can solve where it cuts the y, I mean the x-axis, by letting y equal naught. So we can go naught is equal to minus 2x plus 4. Then we've got minus 4 is equal to minus 2x. I can't be right. Oh, no, I did. That's a minus. That's a plus. Therefore, x is going to be 4 over negative 2. Therefore, x is equal to negative 2. So it goes through here. Yeah. In grade 10s, I apologize again for the fact that I do not have a ruler. So this is going to be a little bit tricky for me to draw straight. Um, I'm just busy trying to wangle my digital pen and pad to make it help me get it a bit straighter. So, but you guys have got a ruler. So I would expect you to be able to draw this just a tad straighter 
And you can use an eraser to join things. Don't do what I'm doing here, which is coloring in bits to make them look nice, okay? So that is my G graph. G of X is equal to minus 2X plus minus 4. Okay, right. Now it says, so we've done that. It says write down the asymptotes of F. Well, we've said that the asymptotes are when X is equal to 0 and when Y is equal to 1. Now they want the domain in F. And remember what I said, your domain is the values for the X axis, okay? It is how far the graph stretches across the X axis. And do you agree it's going to go from minus infinity do, 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 all the way around and no, 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 all the way almost to zero, but not quite. Then almost from zero and then do, 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 all the way to positive infinity. So the domain of f of x, which is the hyperbola, is going to be x is an element of real values for x does not equal zero. It cannot equal zero because that's an asymptote. Now it says solve for x if f of x equals g of x. So what are we doing? We're solving for that point there where they touch, okay? Or possibly touched. I don't know. Might have crossed. What do we need to do? We need to we need to, I'm going to get there, equate these two. So we're going to go 3 over x plus 1 is equal to minus 2x minus 4. Okay, take it across, you get 3 over x plus 2x is minus 4 minus 1. So we can multiply everything by x because this is just terrible. So it becomes 3 plus 2x squared minus 5x equals, and then what do we have? We have a trinomial. We've got 2x squared plus 5x plus 3 equals 0. So we do have two points. We've got a point probably here and a point here. Okay, so now we have to solve this. So it becomes, do you agree the factors are 2 and 1 and 1 and 3? That doesn't work, does it? No. 2 and 1 and 3 and 1 do though, because that'll be plus 2 plus 3. So it becomes 2x plus 3, x plus 1. Therefore, x is equal to minus 3 over 2, or x equals minus 1. So therefore, it says solve for x is these two. It's going to be where x is equal to be minus 1 or x is equal to minus 3 over 2. So that there is going to be minus 1 and minus 1 and a half. And we'll look, it look, actually looks like that. We didn't do too badly. Now it says, determine the values of x for which g of x is smaller than 3 and greater than equal to minus 1. Okay. So let's just translate that into English, shall we? Just let's translate that. They say they want the values of x which g of x is smaller than 3 and greater than or equal to minus 1. So they want to know, if we just have to do this quickly, g of x is this straight, straight line, okay? So if you want to think about looking at it on the graph, they're saying when is the y value of the straight line smaller than 3, okay? and greater than or equal to minus one. Okay, they wanna know what are the x values for this. Okay, so that seems quite complicated and we think we need to substitute, but then it's just a smaller than and not equal. So, but there's a very easy way to solve for this and that's just to actually put that into the equation. So what we can say is minus one is smaller than or equal to, what is g of x? g of x is minus two x minus four which is smaller than 3, okay? So if we take that across, we get minus 1 plus 4 is smaller than or equal to minus 2x is smaller than 3 plus 4. Minus 1 plus 4 is 3 is smaller than or equal to minus 2x over divided by 7. So what did we do? We took this minus 4 and we first added it to that side. So we looked at this left-hand side of the root of the equation. Then we looked at the right hand side of the equation and we added 4 into that side. And all I've done with this so far is just neatened it up. I've gone from minus 1 plus 4 to 3 and 3 plus 4 to 7. Now if we look at this side of the equation, 
degree I need to divide by minus 2 to solve for x. But when I divide by minus, what do I do? I tip and I times. So it becomes greater than or equal to minus 3 over 2 is x. And now I'm going to do exactly the same thing over here, which means this is going to be greater than 7 over 2. Okay. So therefore, the correct answer for this would be that x is smaller than or equal to minus 3 over 2. That's a minus. And greater than minus 7 over 2. That's a minus. You mustn't forget to leave a minus underneath there. Okay, do you understand that? Right, now it says... Um, let's just erase this. It says, determine the y-intercept of k if k of x is 2 times g of x. They want the y-intercept of k if k of x is 2 times g of x. So what do we need to do? We need to work out what k of x is first, okay? So do you agree we're saying that k of x is equal to 2 times g of x, which is 2 times, what is g of x? Minus 2, minus 4. Minus 2x, minus 4, which equals minus 4x, 2 times minus 4 is minus 8, is k of x. And now they want to find the y-intercept, and the y-intercept is your solid number, so therefore that is minus 8. There we go. Finally, it's finally, fine, finally, it says, write down the coordinates of the x and y intercepts of h. If h is the graph of g, uh, we don't do reflections anymore. It's not in the curriculum anymore. Yay! We don't do it anyway, just to show you, just in case your teacher includes it in your exams. Okay, so let's just do it. Okay, it says, it says, Write down the coordinates of the x and y intercept of h if h is the graph of g reflected above the y-axis. Okay, so again we've got the straight line and this is the y-axis. Let me just highlight it for you. Let's use a highlighter. This here is the y-axis. So what we are doing is we are making a mirror image of it. Okay, so in other words, what do we know? We know that if this is going... Oh, let's get a pen. Okay. We know that this is going to be going through here and it's going to be going through there and then it's going to be going up along like that. That would be the mirror image. Okay. And the people, okay, it's exactly the same distance supposedly the whole way up. So it says now what are the y and x intercepts? Well the y intercept, y intercept stays the same. It's going to be 0 minus 4. And the x-intercept is going to be the mirror image. So it's going to be the same distance away from the x-axis. So it's going to be 2, 0. There you go. Not too bad, eh? Phew. Okay, right. It says the graph of f of x is equal to ax squared plus q is sketched below. Okay, it says points a, 2 naught, b minus 3, 2.5 lie on the graph. Points A and C are A and C are x intercepts of f. Now it says write down the coordinates of C. Okay. Now, do you agree with f of x is equal to ax squared plus q? And do you agree that every parabola that you've come across that has this shape is basically symmetrical about the y-axis? About the y-axis. There's no middle term. So this hasn't been shifted or anything strange. All that's happened is it goes up and down, okay? Centered on the y-axis, which means this distance here has to equal that distance there, which means this value here has to be minus 2, 0. Minus 2, 0. So that point there is minus 2, 0. Okay, now it says determine the equation of f. Okay, now if you think about it, f of x could be written as a x minus b x minus c. In other words, we can have some graph that does this, okay? We could have a graph that goes through these points 
but could be a lot steeper, okay? Or it could have a graph that goes through the same points and is a lot shallower, right? So remember that A told you how steep or shallow the graph is, that's the gradient. And these points here are where they cut the x-axis. So if we do that then, we have A, x minus 2, x plus 2, okay? Hang on a second, let me just find my eraser, if I can find my pen, there it is. Um, so we've got x minus 2, x plus 2, okay? But now from that equation, we don't know if this graph is the green graph, the red graph, or the black graph, okay? So what we need to do is substitute a point in because this is y is equal to, right? To get A that tells us what the graph actually looks like and to complete the equation, we need to substitute another point in. And luckily for us, they've got this point here, minus 3, 2.5. So we can substitute in the y value of 2.5 comma 5, and we can substitute in the x value of minus 3, so we go minus 3 minus 2, minus 3 plus 2, okay, so we got 2 comma 5 is equal to a, minus 3 minus 2 is minus 5, minus 3 plus 2 is minus 1, so that just becomes 5a, so a is 2 comma 5 divided by 5, which equals what, let's get out our calculators, should just be half, I think, 2.5, what, it is 2.5 divided by 5, hey? Okay? Yeah, so this is going to be a half, but anyway, let's just check it. 2.5 divided by 5 equals a half, there you go. So A is a half. So they, this is, to try, determine the equation of if it is Y, F of X, is equal to a half X squared, and now we need to find out where it cuts Q. Okay, where it cuts the y-axis. And how do we do that? We're going to substitute in x equals 0 into this equation. Well, hang on. So let's say first we have to multiply this equation. So now we've got y is equal to half x minus 2 x plus 2. So do you agree it's a half x squared minus 2 x plus 2 x goes away and becomes minus 4 which becomes a half x squared minus 2, minus 2. Okay, now it says, write down the range of f. So now they want the range. Now remember what I said to you, range has got a g, and so does the y-axis. It's got that drop, that elongated leg. And that's how I remember which of them is the y-axis, okay? So if that's the case, we can say, well, if that's the case, write down the range. It is going to be from this point upwards that this graph exists, okay? So y has got to be greater than, or it's got to be equal to, and what is that value? It is minus 2. y is going to be greater than or equal to minus 2. There we go. Sure. Okay, let's see what we carry on with, okay? So now it says write down write down the range of h, where h of x equals minus f of x minus 2. Minus f of x minus 2. Okay, so let's work out what the value, what the equation for h is, okay? Shall we do that? So let's go, well, h of x is equal to minus f of x minus 2, okay? So that becomes minus a half x squared minus 2 minus 2. And you must remember put the minus outside the bracket because if you don't, it's going to mess up these signs in case you have to. So that becomes, what does it become? It becomes minus a half x squared plus 2, minus times a plus is a minus is a plus, minus 2, those cancel and you end up with minus a half x squared. So if you think about it, what does this graph look like? Do you agree it goes through zero and it does this now? Okay, it's a sad graph going through zero. So now what is the range? Well, the range of this new graph is going to be 
that y is an element of real values for y is smaller than or equal to zero. It's from zero downwards, okay? Zero downwards. Okay, that's good. Now it says determine equations of exponential function g of x equals b of x plus q with the range y greater than minus four and which passes through point A. Sure. Okay, so we've got, okay. So what are they saying? Let's just erase everything. Okay. They said we've got some exponential. The range is y is greater than minus four. So this we know is minus two. So let's pretend here is minus four just to make it easy for us. So we say that that there is minus four. And they said passes through the point two. So basically we've got a graph that does that. Okay, do you agree? Okay, because it says y is greater than minus 4, which means that the q has got to be minus 4. So therefore, we've got g of x is equal to b to the x minus 4. Okay, because why? Because it tells you that, um, actually, let me think about this. Normally, the exponential function has, that's wrong. Normally, the actual exponential function has a thing of plus one. No, it's zero. It's zero. So it is right. It's minus four. I'm right. I'm right. Sorry. I'm right. It's minus four. Okay. Now, do you agree? We also have a point to naught. So when y is naught, x is two, and we can substitute in. So what zero is equal to b to the two minus four. Therefore, 4 is equal to b squared, and therefore, again, you can have b equals plus or minus 2. But if it's going through this positive 2 here, yeah, it has to be a happy graph. And therefore, we've got y is equal to 2 to the x minus 4. Right, grade 10s, I'm going to call it a day at this point. I hope that going through these functions has given you some insight into the type of exam questions you're going to get and that you'll be able to do these in future. If not, if you're feeling a little bit lost, please go and re-watch the recording of this lesson um, in the same way that you did when and you, you get to it in exactly the same way as if you were um, coming here for a live lesson. Have a lovely day.